Hey everyone, it's Ben with Arctic Cat, and today we are diving deep into the world of engineering. In this video, we're gonna be talking about powertrain. Joining me is Jeremy, who's gonna to talk to us a little bit about the engine. So Jeremy, the laydown engine is a design element that really no other OEM has mastered, and it's pretty unique to Arctic Cat. Tell me a little bit about this. Let's go back in time and talk to me about the history of this design. All right, so the first Articat laid-on engines were first conceptualized back in the late 1990s by some of our Articat legends in the powertrain group, um, like Greg Spaulding and Don Eide. The first prototype engines were actually cut and welded in-house, fabricated from existing engines. Uh, they went through several different design iterations till they came up with uh, kind of with the layout that you see right here with the intake and the exhaust both on the same side and the cylinders tipped back at a 30-degree angle. Eventually we went through several different uh, prototype builds of this engine layout. And finally it went into production for the first time in the 2002 Articat Snow Pearl 440 race sled um, with great success. So having this lay down engine design, it's got to generate a tremendous amount of advantages. What are some of those advantages? So really the biggest advantage of the Articat lay down engine back in, you know, when this thing was first conceptualized back in the late 1990s, and still rings true today is, is mass centralization. So original concept was to try to bring the engine as far back and centralize the mass in the vehicle as much as possible. And we're still doing that today. And really the big advantage with the Catalyst platform is that we're really able to, uh, to take full advantage of that and um, really shrink wrap the vehicle around this engine as much as possible like we never really have been able to before. Are there some strength qualities that you get out of laying the engine down like we do? Absolutely. So the engine has, you know, versus your typical stand-up engine, the engine has what we call a pyramidal um, or triangular shaped upper crankcase half. Our main crankcase fasteners are acting both in shear and tension, which allows us to have a very stiff engine, which keeps our crankshaft in near perfect alignment during engine operation, keeps our cylinder bores in near perfect alignment during engine operation, which gives us a very, uh, you know, a reliable engine and also helps with our engine performance as well. So looking at this cutaway design, I'm noticing uh, the, the cooling system and Articat has somewhat of a unique cooling system design. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yep, Articat features what we call a reverse flow cooling system. So what we actually do is we pump water from the water pump here up into the cylinder head first. What that does is it offers some advantages in that we're pumping the coldest water into the hottest part of the engine, which reduces detonation and increases the performance of the engine. So let's move around to the front of the engine and talk about the intake design. Tell me what's new about that. Yep, so some of the things that changed on the intake side of the engine are all new V-Force reeds. Uh, we were able to partner with V-Force, who is a big name in the, uh, the two-stroke performance industry. So we're pretty excited about that. Excellent. Now, how about the stator? I'm noticing that there's a new stator in this as well. Yep, the engine features a new stator and a new flywheel. The flywheel has um, more teeth around the peripheral, which gives it a higher resolution which gives us some advantages on our EFI side, increasing our, uh, the accuracy of our, of our crankshaft and piston position. Now, when I first pulled over the all-new Catalyst, I noticed that it was a little bit easier. Is there something that contributes to that? Yep, so we have an all-new recoil on this engine. The recoil has a different engagement system on it, which reduces the actual pull to engagement on the rope by about 40%, making it a little bit easier to pull and engage. Awesome, Jeremy, well, thanks so much for talking to me today. Thank you. Next up, I'm going to introduce to you guys Sam Sandoz, who's going to talk to us a little bit about the Adapt CVT clutch and the brand new belt drive system. Sam, thanks for joining us. Talk to me a little bit about what benefits we get out of this new Adapt CVT. Yep. So the Adapt CVT system took about a pound out of the overall system, as well as decreased the width of the drive clutch by an inch. Bringing the design internal allowed us to have components in it. If required, they can be serviced. So easy serviceability, weight reduction, and width reduction. Correct. Now, when developing the Catalyst platform, having a compact mass centralized design was also really important. Were we thinking about that when we were designing the ADAPT CVT? Yep. So when the ADAPT CVT was in the development phase, a lot of excitement over how it was able to reduce the width on the drive clutch. Um, as it moved forward, because of that reduction, the body work on the Catalyst platform was allowed to be basically shrink wrapped in. Cool, so this really helped us tighten the whole overall packaging of the Catalyst. So moving on to the belt drive system, this is something that's all new for the Catalyst platform and is offered in the ZR, the Mountain, and the Riot platform. Tell me about what prompted this all new design. The overall weight for the vehicle was a, a, a driving factor when developing the Catalyst. 
Uh, and the belt drive is inherently lighter than a chain case, so it made sense to make the move. So talking about the overall design of this, what does a belt drive consist of? So the belt drive consists of a, a case, an eccentric hub, two sprockets, and a, a belt. So what benefits do you get out of a belt drive system versus a traditional chain case drive? Yeah, so with the belt drive case and belt drive system, you get a reduction of parts, not having to have an idler system, not having oil, seals, gaskets, a cover that goes over this, and then you get a lighter weight belt versus a chain. Um, on top of that, you have obviously less rotational mass as well as driveline vibration is decreased and it's it's a lot easier to service due to not having to crack open a case and drain oil. Really excited to see a belt drive system on the all new Catalyst. Now what makes our belt drive system better than the competition? Our belt drive system is unique in the way we use an eccentric hub in the belt drive case. As the eccentric hub rotates within the case it's able to increase and decrease tension to the belt allowing for installation of this belt without any specialty tools. So no tools required to set the tension whatsoever? Nope, the hub is twisted into one of the two locations into the case, um, dependent on what gear ratio you're choosing, and then the tension set from there. Very cool. So obviously, ton of weight reduction in this. How much weight did we actually remove with this belt drive system? So the overall weight from the system was about five pounds with one and a half pounds of rotating weight, not including the effects of oil. So being a belt drive system, is there any required service intervals for these belts or are these kind of lifelong components? So the design for the belt drive is to be a lifelong component without the necessity of changing a belt or adjusting tension. Um, engineering has done multiple durability cycles on these systems with no loss in belt tension or performance throughout. Very cool. Sam, thanks so much for joining us. Obviously, a lot of stuff to be excited about with the all-new Catalyst. If you guys want to learn more, go to articat.com slash catalyst.